Imagine a tinderbox, dry, crackling, and just one spark away from an inferno. That's the Middle East right now, folks. And guess who's handling the matches? The US and Iran locking a tense standoff that could explode into full-blown confrontation. But hey, don't grab your popcorn just yet. This isn't some Hollywood blockbuster. This is real, it's urgent, and it's happening right now. So before the flames engulf the region, let's unpack the situation peek behind the curtain and answer the burning question, are we on the brink of Middle Eastern nightmare? Stick around to find out. Geopolitical Dynamics The conflict between Israel and Hamas has extended into involved broader regions in the Middle East, raising concerns about a potential confrontation between regional and global powers. The ongoing fighting primarily consists of retaliatory attacks between Iran-backed militias and the US, Israel, and their allies. Recent direct involvement by both Iran and the US has heightened fears that the existing proxy conflict could escalate into a direct confrontation between the two. Thus far, the US and Iran have refrained from direct confrontation. The US has targeted Iranian-backed groups in Yemen, Syria, and Iraq, while Iran-affiliated groups have attacked American personnel in Iraq and Syria. Tehran has also conducted strikes against a group it identifies as anti-Iran in Iraq, Syria, and Pakistan, with Pakistan responding with retaliatory strikes. Iran opposing the presence of U.S. forces in what it sees as its sphere of influence has established a network of Islamist, anti-Western, and anti-Israel militias over the past few decades, providing training, funding, and arms. These group, notably Yemen's Houthi rebels, have become more aggressive, disrupting a crucial international waterway and impacting global trade. Leading Western states to intervene, Iran has cultivated ties with and financially supported Hamas, which initiated its conflict with Israel on October 7. Despite the U.S. effort to pivot away from the Middle East, it has augmented its military presence in the region during the conflict deploying approximately 1,200 U.S. service members, along with additional personnel aboard Navy carrier strike groups and a roughly 2,000-strong Marine Expeditionary Unit. In areas such as Iraq and Syria, the U.S. military presence overlaps with, with that of Iran and its allies. As tensions escalate in the region, here is a breakdown of, of where Iran or its allies are present where U.S. forces are stationed and where both sides have conducted military operations since the commencement of the Israel-Hamas war. Lebanon Lebanon hosts Hezbollah, a powerful paramilitary force in the Middle East and an effective regional proxy of Iran. Hezbollah has a significant presence on the Israel-Lebanon border and has engaged in hostilities with Israel during the Gaza war. The group is closely aligned with Hamas in Gaza and is estimated to possess between 150,000 and 200,000 missiles, along with rockets and mortars. Its leader, Syed Hassan Nasrallah, claims a force of 100,000 fighters, and Iran is considered its main arms supplier. In Iraq, Tehran holds influence over Shiite militias, such as Kataib Hezbollah, Karakat al Nuhaba and Kataib Sayyid al-Shuhada, closely associated with the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Group Corps IRGC. Some of these groups, including Kataib Hezbollah, are seen more accountable to Tehran than to Baghdad government. The U.S. estimates that these militias have to 10,000 members. Iran-backed groups in Iraq have conducted numerous attacks against U.S. forces in response to the Gaza war, leading to the U.S. retaliatory airstrikes. The current U.S. military presence in Iraq involves 2,500 forces deployed at various bases, including Erbil AB, Al-Assad AB, and uh, Jok-E Union 3 base in Baghdad. Iraq's Prime Minister has expressed a desire for the exit of the U.S.-led coalition, citing concerns about the country becoming a staging ground for regional conflicts. The U.S. maintains that its military presence is at the invitation of the Iraqi government. Syria Iran has a direct presence in Syria through its Quds Force, an elite unit of the RIGC, Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corp, deployed to support the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. After the 2011 uprising, 
Iranian personnel served as military advisors and fought on the front lines alongside Iranian-backed militias. Syria also hosts the Sainabiyun and Fatimiyun brigades, shot militias linked to the RIGC, recruiting Afghan and Pakistani fighters. In Syria, the U.S. has around 800 forces as part of an ongoing mission to defeat ISIS. Most U.S. forces are stationed in the eastern Syria security area, supporting the anti-regime Syrian Democratic Forces in the northeast. Additionally, there is some U.S. troop presence in the Syria southeast, supporting the Syrian Free Army, which opposes Syrian regime. However, the Syrian regime considers the U.S. to be an invader. Recently, U.S. troops in Syria have faced attacks from Iran-backed groups leading to U.S. airstrikes in response. Yemen At the center of the current proxy conflict between Iran and the U.S. are Yemen's Houthi rebels, who have intensified their attacks on ships in Red Sea, citing retaliation against Israel for its action in Gaza. The group currently controls northern Yemen, engaged in almost eight years of conflict with a U.S.-backed and Saudi-led coalition before a temporary cessation of hostilities last year. Initially, Houthi weapons are predominantly assembled using Iranian components smuggled into Yemen in pieces. However, the group has made significant modification, leading to substantial overall improvements, according to an official familiar with U.S. intelligence, as reported by CNN. The U.S. military has stationed warships in Red Sea, off Yemen's coast to target Houthi's position. In December, the U.S. formed a coalition compromising over 20 nations to protect commercial traffic from Houthi attacks in Red Sea. Gaza Strip in Israel The Gaza Strip is a place in the Middle East that is surrounded and under pressure. In that area, there is a group called Hamas which Israel thinks had about 30,000 fighters before a recent war. Hamas is a group that started in 1987, and on October 7, they attacked Israel, causing the death of around 1,200 people and taking 250 others as hostages, according to Israel. Iran has become closer to Hamas in the past few years, unlike Iran's other friend in the region. Hamas is a Sunni Muslim group, not Shiite. There's no proof that Iran knew about the October 7 attacks beforehand, and it's thought that Iran doesn't have as much as influence on Hamas as it does on its friend in other region. The U.S. thinks that the Iran has historically given around $100 million per year in support to Palestinian militant groups, including Hamas and another group in Gaza called the Palestinian Islamic Jihad. On the other side, Israel gets a lot of military help from the U.S., with more than $130 billion given since it was founded in 1948. Gulf Arab States and Turkey The war between Israel and Hamas hasn't reached the Gulf Arab states yet. But some of these nations feel at risk because Iran-linked groups have, have targeted them before. In 2019, the Houthis attacked Saudi Arabia, and in 2022, the United Arab Emirates was targeted. The Gulf states, which are allies of the United States, have some of the largest deployments of U.S. troops globally. Kuwait hosts the largest American military presence in the region, with around 13,500 U.S. forces. The second largest presence is in Qatar, where approximately 10,000 U.S. forces are stationed at, at Aludid Air Base. Recently, the U.S. extended its military presence at the Qatar base for another 10 years. Qatar has relations with Hamas and has hosted its political office in the capital, Doha, since 2012. Saudi Arabia has over 2,700 U.S. forces at a Prince Sultan Air Base, while the UAE hosts 3,500 U.S. military personnel at Al Dafra Air Base, which is also the location of Gulf Air Warfare Center. Additionally, Bahrain, with the U.S. Naval Forces Central Command and the Navy's 5th Fleet, and Jordan hosting around 3,000 U.S. troops, are hubs for U.S. military presence. Turkey hosts 1,465 military members at Inserlink Air Base. So are we on the brink of Middle Eastern meltdown? The answer, my friend, is uncertain. The situation is volatile, the stakes are high, and the potential consequences are catastrophic. Share your thoughts and comments below. And if you like this video, click the next one shown on the screen. Thanks for watching.